Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. So this is Spencer Colgan. Welcome back to my show. Today we have a beautiful print from the UK. Two panels, each the width of approximately 50 inches and the height of about 10 feet long. The challenge is to put it on these walls, this one and that one, and to get rid of the brown so that the brown doesn't come through. Let me show you a product. So we're in a bathroom, which has moisture, with a fan that doesn't really pull out the moisture created by these two sinks. All right, you might be able to hear it in the background. This is the go-to product for this job. Mold and mildew shield. And why do we want white? So I usually tell you to use shields clear, right? but I'm using Shields White. You see that, it's tintable. This is an excellent product that's been on the market longer than I've been on the planet. Okay, give you an idea. And the reason why we want white is because we don't want the white and the brown showing flashing colors through our beautiful product. Let me show you this thing. 100 feet. So as I apply my, my uh, white primer, I want to let you know that this is such a good primer that it doesn't cover with one coat. Now that sounds like a bad thing, right? But it grips onto the wall and you get what appears to be like, in a camera would be called pixelated application. You give this two coats and it's gonna come out a universal color. I didn't coat this yet, this is my compound. This is my five minute fast drying mud, which is still curing. So I don't wanna cover it for fear that the air in the compound will try to come out of the primer that will be dry and then cause blistering. So I'm trying to accelerate the process without compromising the the craftsmanship uh, or the professional installation that we will see at the end of this video okay but with a dark colored paint uh, i i would i would not feel comfortable putting wall covering over a dark color unless the wall covering were the same color but we don't have the same color this is a brown our wall covering is blue and has different color birds, etc., etc. Now, just to let you know, if you're new at this, you know I put, I skim coated this area, right? Take a look. If you don't wait sufficient amount of time before you hang your wallpaper, these little air bubbles will make a problem for your wall covering later on, okay? It's a very serious consideration. Okay, now I'm just putting... Uh, liquid over liquid here. That's all I'm doing. So my bubbles I can brush away as you see me doing here. But if you and I were to put our wall covering over this, you would agree that those air pockets would manifest themselves into a nice big bubble here and over here if we didn't make sure we anticipated them, right? So we want to let this dry really well. And that's all, they, they come out nice and easily. But you don't want to put your wall covering on the wall 
with these air pockets forming. So you have to realize that you need to give it time. That's all I'm trying to let you know. And let me just re remind, I don't know if I said it on the video, let me remind you that the bubbles are coming from the, just the, the plaster which has, it's drying and it's underneath this primer. So those, that air is escaping, manifested by the multiplicity of bubbles that you saw. We didn't just get bubbles here and none here for, for no good reason. We got them here because this is still curing. So just be careful of that. So here is panel one of two. The other one, just like it, is underneath it. I'm laying them out because I don't want them to be inclined to roll up or to resist getting flattened out when I put it on the wall. I'm pasting the wall first with a heavy-duty clear paste. Okay? So, you can see the pattern. It's very busy. And the lady who's having me hang it wants to get these little bunnies they're somewhere on this and and they're they're not all over the place there's one down here and the other one has one at the bottom as well but not up at top so i'm thinking and i don't know if i'm going to do it i'm thinking about cutting the bunny out and transplanting it up here but i i didn't guarantee her that i would do it so, what do you think? Is it beautiful? What I'm going to do is take the product to my table and trim the selvage. I'm going to cut that right off so that when I install it, I'll be installing it with that edge at my hand here, with the white removed, so that all I have to do is overlap this onto the next one about an inch and a quarter and then cut it down the overlap okay we don't want the selvage in the way i've hung it like that before and it's not the best way to go so i put the product on my table and i trimmed off the selvage on both sides putting one panel on top of the other so that I can do both. Killing two birds with one stone, right? And so now we're ready to hang, folks. Come on, let's go. Lightly sand after you use the shields to make it nice and smooth. Get those burrs off. They'll be permanent. Feel first with your hand.
Okay, our first piece is up. Now, the customer, this wall exceeds the number of inches wide of the wall covering I have left. So we're going to do something creative. We're going to seam in or hem in or uh, splice in a piece that doesn't go here. I have it right in my hand here. It's the top part of this sheet. And we're going to make it look the best we can like it matches. So let's get to it. How do we make this look like it fits? It's not an easy task. Okay. First of all, we got these flowers here. I like that. So I'm going to try to leave these flowers in. And cut this, this thing. So that we can keep this thing. You agree? Okay. Then man, I wish I had somebody to hold this. I gotta do my job. Each of these sheets is almost a thousand dollars. Just about. So 
So she's not going to spend a thousand dollars to waste it where the door goes, right? This is the benefit of using a see-through guide so that I can see where the flowers land as I'm covering them. Let me show you what I did. So I'm cutting down, eliminating this piece to let in this part. You see how I want this line here? That's part of this sheet. Now watch this. I eliminated this green on this sheet that's covering my my nice line, my vertical line, right? Look what I exposed. Just a beautiful flower here and the line. Now check this out. Um, you see this flower here? This flower belongs to this sheet, so I left it fully intact, as you can see here. Look, folks, you can do this. It's just about being a little creative. You see this? You put that down over it. You see that? And now we're just going to eliminate this piece right over that. That's it.
choice is obvious, right? There's our scene. Now, if you're saying, Spencer, you're good at this. The wallpaper is so good, it allows me to do this. You can't do this with every wall cover. Trust me when I tell you. Please. Now let me bring you in close and show you. Now look, I know you can say, well, Spencer, you're missing the bar. This is $1,000 a sheet. This piece here is $1,000. My customer wanted me to use my skills to blend a, a, a scab piece and attach it to the original piece. Okay? Do you agree it's not worth it to waste a thousand dollars to get this sheet in here so that most of it can be wasted by the door? So we wind up with a piece right over there that doesn't match. But I have a scrap piece so we're going to try to put that in and make it work.
Now we just put our finishing touches, covering up our primer coat. And there we have it. So we started over here in this corner. Remember the customer purchased two panels of 54 plus inch panel mural. It's a straight match and it is a fine quality mural. We ran out of we ran out of mural. This was known, the customer told me. Hey, I'm going to run out of space, but it falls over the doorway where this panel meets this one. So maybe you can use some of the scrap to fill in the header. And so I did. And you saw that on this video. We simply pieced together the first sheet and the second sheet with a fill in piece to form the header. Then we came around and we fell short once again, approximately six inches right in that corner there. And so we did another splice. And you will see at the very end, right up here, this is a fill-in piece from scrap. 